It's Monday. Get the cattle on. Hello and welcome back to the Shibri Studios YouTube channel. If you are new around here, my name is Jonathan. This is a channel where we basically talk a lot about my art. We follow along on my journey as I try to make it as a professional artist after getting back into art after 10 years away. And this video in particular is the Art Journal. It is our weekly series where we grab a nice cozy cup of tea, have a little sit down and have a chat about everything that's happened in the last seven days and whatever else is in my mind. So the first thing that I really want to dive into this week is the same thing I dive into every week. It's whatever art I created this week. Uh, if you've been following along in the Instagram, it's at Shibri Studios. The link's down in the description. If you're not following, go and check it out. Uh, I uploaded uh, one piece of original art this week, and it's definitely, you know, it was different than the stuff that I have been uploading in previous weeks. If you've been watching every single video as we've uploaded them every Monday, you would have known that I'm producing a lot of artwork, like the pieces behind me, which are based on Armagh City. Um, it's my hometown. It's kind of in view of the Armagh Craft Fair coming up in May. So I was trying to get a little bit of a portfolio built up of Armagh style illustrations. However, this week we did something a little bit different. Uh, I produced this illustration. It is a self-portrait illustration, you could say, but it was just a picture of me sitting upside down on the cozy little chair that we have in our living room, uh, holding up my iPad, working away, doing my illustration. And I, I mean, the main reason why I did this piece is because I just wanted to. It just, I had the idea in my head. It seemed like a very fun piece. It seemed like something that as soon as I thought about it, I went, oh, I really wanna you know, sit down and do this. Uh, so I just did. And I think a lot of the time, it's very important to kind of find a balance between Art is a creative outlet. If you're trying to pursue it as a career, there has to be, you know, a business structure to it. You know, I'm doing a lot of Armagh based pieces, not only because I enjoy it, but as I mentioned, it's going to be something that can be very commercial, something that people are going to want to purchase. So it does get me into a place of being able to do this professionally, but you can never take away from just the love and the joy of art. Like that should, I think, always be very central and very fundamental to what you're doing. So taking that little break that week from uh, doing the Armagh architectural illustration to doing something I just thought was a fun idea, I think it kind of need to do that every now and then. In terms of the piece itself, um, there was a lot of things different in this piece. It was the first time that I was kind of focusing not just on drawing the character, I put more effort into thinking about the environment and the surroundings of the characters in. A lot of the illustrations that I would have produced previously, you'll have noticed that it's often just a single character stood against, you know, the either coloured or white backdrop in terms of the architectural stuff that I've done. They're usually kind of that floating in space with a little bit of the idea of the land behind them, some trees, some foliage, whatever it is, to kind of frame it almost. But in terms of creating like a full a uh, piece covering the whole of the canvas that I'm using. This is the first time that I really dove into that. And it, it wasn't, you know, an, an overly complicated piece, uh, but I definitely feel that it certainly came across as a much more completed look when I added in the floors and the skirting boards and the walls and everything around it. I do think that it, it absolutely elevated the piece, but there were a few things that I actually added into this that I think I didn't catch really... that. Could you try again? Nobody's asking you. So, interruptions aside, um, I spent a lot of time uh, working on the texturing of the chair itself. Uh, the chair that I'm sitting on, I really wanted to focus on getting the, the feeling of the fabric into the piece. You know, I really kind of worked quite hard differentiating between the fabric of the throw that's on the chair and the chair itself. So there was a lot of fine detail that went into that, but it's something that I think turned out really, really well. Definitely elevated the piece. And I think you had a little bit of a, there was a balancing act in terms of trying to make sure that you're making the chair have that unique look that you're trying to get across the idea of what kind of fabric it's made from, but also not making the chair the focal piece of the, the actual painting, so, or the illustration, I should say, because that's, that's kind of finding that balance. And I think that it worked very well. Although there's quite a lot of texturing, I made sure that the color usage was very subtle so that there are details that are there if you're gonna go and look for them, but they're not gonna be overpowering when you look at the piece itself. Um, one of the things that I really thought about with this piece was I've mentioned in my interview with RMI, in my vlogs, even here on the Art Journal, that one of the things that I want to do 
is to create uh, children's books. Um, not just, I've mentioned doing them uh, like a charity children's book, but I've also just would like to produce children's books myself that I would write and illustrate. And this particular piece certainly feels like the closest piece of artwork that I've completed that I feel would be the style of illustration that I would like to implement into the children's books that I go on to create. So it was a little bit of a, an exercise into trying to refine that style a little bit more for me. Um, but I had so much fun working on all the little details. Like I genuinely, this is up there as one of the most fun things I've done since I've been getting back into this. And I was so happy with the final outcome. And I do think that as I'm moving forward, that I will be spending a little bit more time trying to focus on the environment that my characters are in. So the next thing that I really wanted to sit and talk about this week, it was a massive, massive thing for me. Um, if you've been following along with the vlog, if you've been following me over my other social media channel, you'll have known that I had my interview with Arma I, that the interview went live uh, just last week. And I knew that getting what we were doing out to more people and getting more attention to it would have some kind of effect. You know, I expected to see the, you know, following on social media grow and it certainly did, which was great. I've had so many great interactions with everybody who's got involved, particularly local people, because they're going to see the article, they're going to resonate with the kind of artwork that I've been producing of, you know, Arma landmarks. But I was more excited about the opportunities that could come from that. And literally within two hours of the, the interview going up, I got a message which was uh, from a school here in the city that was asking me would I be interested in coming in and speaking to their GCSE art students, which for me, you know, that, that completely blew me away because when you're doing anything like this, the idea of being able to really, you know, encourage and affect people to get back into art too. Like that's a lot of what I want to do in documenting this journey. It's not just that I think there's an interesting story to be told in someone getting back into art after such a long time away. But by going on that journey, you're trying to show other people that they can do it too. And like that was a big part of why I've kind of undertook this whole thing from the beginning. So just being given the opportunity to go and speak to students who are there at a GCSE level, who are at such an early stage, and to be able to have the opportunity to positively affect the creative journey that they're going to take in their life. It was just unbelievable. I, I genuinely, I couldn't believe it whenever I got the message. One of the things that I suppose happens in any situation like that, you know, I instantly started then going in my mind and kind of reflecting on me when I was a GCSE art student and what my kind of feelings were of that, because obviously you, you head into further education and you really kind of pursue uh, whatever your passion is, whatever your chosen subject is, in a much more in-depth way. So I think a lot of the time we kind of forget about the GCSE experience that we had in our chosen field, because obviously it was mixed in with all the other subjects that we were doing. So I sat down and was kind of thinking about my own GCSE art experiences, and I actually remembered when I was doing GCSE art, I initially thought that that was going to be it for me. I didn't think that I was going to follow on to further education or our A levels in art. I actually remember at one point my considerations for my A level choices were history, ancient history, business studies and economics. So about as far away from art as you could possibly get. And it actually wasn't until the last minute that I decided that I was going to be leaving that school and going on to do my national diploma in the Southern Regional College in Armagh at the time just purely focusing on art. It was that kind of, I was just on the precipice of walking away from art for probably the first time in my life. And I just at the last minute said, nope, can't do it. And dove head in, you know, really like went in, dropped everything else and focused solely on the art. But when I think about why that was, you know, I didn't really feel that the teacher that I had at GCSE art level didn't appear particularly enthusiastic about uh, being in the position where they were, where they could help encourage and influence, you know, this next generation of young people who were exploring their creativity. Uh, there wasn't a lot of kind of involved time with the students. And I kind of felt that there, there wasn't a lot of structure and there wasn't a lot of guidance. And, you know, I felt kind of the school itself 
didn't really look at art in the most positive way. Like it certainly wasn't held to the kind of higher academic levels that, you know, like science or math or, you know, languages would have been. I kind of think that art, from my perspective, it was kind of this thing that was pushed off to the side. And, you know, when you're young, you might not be consciously aware of that. But I mean, that kind of stuff does seep in, you know, whenever there's a perceived lack of importance given to the thing that you're passionate about. At such a young age, when you're still, you know, you are in the very formative years of the thing that you're going to go on to do for the rest of your life. So the fact that I was in that kind of environment, it, it didn't ignite my passion. It didn't make me think this is something that you can pursue. This is a, a serious venture that you can take. So that kind of came up quite a lot in my mind. And again, that kind of put a lot of importance into going on to do what I'm going to be doing by having this talk. Like this is, if I felt a GCSE level that I didn't have that, that this thing that I was interested in wasn't really seen as particularly important. Even the person teaching it didn't seem to really give much of an importance to it or be that actively involved in it. Well, I have a, an opportunity to do the complete 180 to that for this these students that I'm going to get to speak to, which in one sense, I could look at that and think, oh, this is that's a that's a huge responsibility. But genuinely, I'm just I'm really excited and completely honored to have the opportunity to go and do this. Like, you know, it seems to be a very different situation in the school that I'm walking into because the teacher who reached out and spoke to me, uh, she is the teacher of the art and design for the GCSE students. And the fact that she reached out and I, I, her wording was something akin to she wanted to have somebody else in there other than her who can promote creativity to these children and well, these young adults, I should say, they're not children. And that to me shows like someone who really cares. They have their heart in the right place, but they also, they still have that passion about the subject. And they really respect the responsibility that they have as a teacher to these young adults as they're starting off in that journey. So that gave me such a positive feeling that, you know, I really want to go and I want to give this everything I can. I want to be able to, you know, if, if there's, kids in there who are considering that art isn't just a recreational interest in them it's something that they feel they could pursue professionally if I'm in any way able to encourage them to follow in that path and not only that if I can get the message across to all of them even the ones who maybe like you'll have people doing art at GCSE level not all of them are going to be interested in following through a career in art it just might be like an interest or a pastime or a passion for them but if I can in any way say anything to encourage them that it's a fantastic pastime. It's self-expression is such a vitally important thing for people. And in terms of this, this day and age where we have such an increased awareness of people's mental health, and we know that a really fundamental part of being able to be healthy, both inside and out, is the ability to be heard and to express yourself. So encouraging them to engage in something that allows them to take everything from inside here and put it in a healthy, constructive way into something beautiful, you know, that's massive. So I'm really, really looking forward to this. As I said, it is, it's an absolute honor to be given that opportunity. And I really, really can't, I just can't wait to get involved. It's gonna be very, very exciting. But yeah, I think that is gonna be everything that I wanted to talk about this week. Uh, I really hope you've enjoyed sitting down and having this little chat with me. I always enjoy doing these videos, as I'd mentioned before. I think I kind of, I learn something about myself every time I sit down to do these. But um, make sure that you are hitting the like button, comment and share and subscribe and all of these little things that you hear people say on their videos all the time. It really does help get the videos out to a wider audience. YouTube just seems to love all that stuff. And the more you do it, the more these videos are going to get seen by other people, the bigger this channel is going to grow and the more time that I'm going to be able to spend putting into the work that we're doing here. But I massively appreciate everyone who's been following along on this journey so far. We did just hit over 24 hours worth of watch time. It's crazy. That's an entire day in a human being's life. But thank you so much for joining me. I look forward to seeing you again for our Draw This In Your Style Challenge video on Thursday. Nearly corrected myself. Not Wednesday anymore. See you on Thursday. Mm -hmm.